What would happen if a Second Life avatar could come out of the screen and end up sitting on your desk? That's the question that I started asking when I visited Julian Staden's Slarips installation at the John Curtin Gallery. Julian very kindly allowed me to film the installation. He's a student in the Master of Arts in Electronic Arts at Curtin University. The exhibition runs from the 20th of June to the 1st of August 2008. Slarips is the Second Life Augmented Reality and Physical Space project and he describes it as the development of interactive augmented reality constructs that appear 3D in physical space when viewed through a head-mounted display. It uses Second Life as a starting point for an image projection in 3D of an avatar. It also uses the avatar template from Second Life. If you've done any work in Second Life, you'll recognise the figure as using the avatar template from Second Life. However, it just uses it as a starting point, I think. At the moment, you're not really grabbing, grabbing an avatar out of Second Life. But the what if that it asks and makes you start thinking about is really, really interesting. I used the installation following some printed instructions that Julian leaves for people in the gallery. If Julian had have explained it and then given a demonstration himself, I'm sure it would have been much more smooth. As you can see, I found it a rather immersive experience. Oh, he jumped on. Did you see him jump on? No. He just jumped on. So I'm filming you rather than it. Um, yep. It's on the ring. When you first visit Slarips, you see a screen showing a real Second Life interaction and you have some equipment on the table in front of you. The equipment looks rather plain and um, rather normal until you put on the headset, which is a webcam, and suddenly a 3D avatar appears on the little paddle that you're holding. This is what it looks like. Uh oh, he's lost an arm. Yeah. Now, how did you get him to go onto the. You can see I'm taking the paddle up to the red circle, and it changes the avatar when I do that. Now he's only got one leg, poor chap. Going down to the blue circle, which appears because of the um, headset. He very briefly jumped onto that, and now I have to take him back to the red circle in order to be transformed again. Now here's the setup that actually makes it happen. You've got a webcam on a headset with a desk lamp. There's the screen, which shows a real Second Life installation. You could um, use the menu controls. On the corner of the desk is a button. You press that and he teleports back to where he jolly well ought to be. That symbol in the centre is what makes the entire installation happen. Then down here is the headset. And what makes it really interesting for other people who are, who's watch, who are watching, who's watching it is over here there's a projection of what's being seen through the webcam. Now here's the avatar looking really kind of person-like, like he's got a little Hawaiian shirt on, and he quite obediently tries to jump down, and then comes back up. Now as you go up towards the screen, you'll notice that there's a big gap where you don't see the avatar. That's because the lighting in the gallery wasn't really working as it ought to do. If I picked up the light and followed the uh, little paddle, then I actually would get a better uh, image. Now, as you can see, he's changed from somebody wearing a nice Hawaiian shirt into quite a plain grey looking avatar. And Julian had actually made the decision that he was going to distort the avatar. Now, I've put my hand here, and because that breaks the image, it stops the projection of the 3D figure, and you lose that immersion. So here he is with the just one leg, and then he changes 
into this Venus de Milo who's been through the laundry kind of figure. Hops off. And then the final figure doesn't really look much like a person at all. The final figure is this distorted little image that you can just leave sitting on your desktop and walk away.